special occasion as we gather to honour Sergeant Cyril E. Gawley for his bravery and dedication, particularly at the Battle of Conway, on this day a hundred years ago, when he earned the BC by sticking to his guns all day, but also for his own months <coughs> earlier decoration of the military medal when he put out a fire close to an ammunition dump. On both occasions, saving many casualties and avoiding loss of life. We honour him for his courage in the face of personal danger. No thought for his own safety, but a job to be done. Getting on with it and just getting through in all the unimaginable horror of that terrible war. Over these past few weeks, through printed records, services, and accounts from families whose fathers, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers served with Sergeant Gordon and were with him at Little Preel Farm a hundred years ago today, and indeed were themselves decorated. I have a picture of someone who was a natural leader, taking charge of the situation at Combray at a moment's notice, organising his men, manhandling the guns, and the gun and keeping it going at close range to the enemy. Someone who didn't seek honour or favour, a self-effacing, somewhat shy person, principled, on his investiture, collecting his VC in his sergeant's uniform, though by then, of course, he had been granted a commission, and wearing it too for a civic reception in his honour. The Liverpool Echo at that time hailed him as a bashful hero. Being lauded by the Vice-Chancellor and students of his University of Liverpool, he declined to make a speech to them. Frankly, why would he want to? He'd had a job to do, he'd done his duty, and he got on with it. Maybe he just couldn't see what all the fuss was about. The real hero and character of Sergeant Gawley for me was his humility and his grace in not setting himself above or apart from the men that he served with. He did a soldier's work. Whatever needed to be done whilst leading and guiding those around him. It is a great privilege to be part of this commemorative service here today to honour Sergeant Cyril E. Gawley, VC. We can be proud that he was a local boy and we connect with him through his home, his church and his school here in West Kirk. We can claim him as our own and know that we really are standing on the shoulders of a giant. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, can I please ask for everybody less the VIPs and the medal bearers to start making their way up to the graveside, please.
eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life.
to ask W O to Ralph if he would read the psalm for us. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore.
aesthetic commemoration. The unveiling of the Victoria Cross Stone in honour of Sergeant Stella Gilby from the 275th West Lancashire Brigade Royal Field and Artillery. I'd also like to offer a special welcome to the family of the Liverpool and on behalf of the city of Liverpool, thank you for attending and taking part in this commemoration service. And if I may so especially come, please come all the way from Australia for this event. The Victoria Cross is the highest and most prestigious award for gallantry in the face of the enemy. In 2014, the UK government launched a campaign to recognise the first World War Centenary commemorations and honour those men awarded the Victoria Cross during the First World War. The Victoria Cross Baby Stones programme is part of these centenary commemorations. It is a national scheme run by the Department for Communities local government, which will see every World War I Victoria Cross recipient remembered in this way. In Liverpool alone, there will be a total of ten stones unveiled, including an additional one tomorrow. Cyril was born on the 19th January 1893 at 6 Victoria Park in Waytree, Liverpool. Before moving with his family to West Kirby in 1899 when he was only six years old. He was educated at Colding Grange Grammar School on the Wirral and then graduated from Liverpool University in 1913 with a degree in commercial science. He then went to, on to work, as, as we mentioned, for the Blue Funnel shipping line. Post-war with leave alerts. Sybil joined the British Army as a private of the Royal Field Artillery Territorial Forces in 1914, and the action for which he earned his Victoria Cross was on the 30th of November 1917 at Little Creole Farm, East of the Ville, France, during the Battle of Cambrai. During this time, he was a sergeant in the D Battery of the 276th West Lancashire Brigade. Cyril was also awarded the Military Medal for Gallantry. Today we honour the local impact of the Great War and the gallantry and selfless actions of Sergeant Cyril Kudu. Exactly a hundred years to this very day, he fought for the freedom and peace that we all enjoy. Therefore, as we stand here, we should reflect and give thanks to Cyril and others who gave so much for their country and our lives. Shortly outside, I will be unveiling a commemorative stone in honour of Sergeant Louis, which will ensure that his bravery is recognised for years to come. The stone will now sit alongside three other local heroes who also received the Victoria Cross during World War I. And I hope that these stones continue to indicate local communities about the important role that Cyril and Liverpool play in the Great War. Thank you, Shabbat. 
artillery band, and of course, our military. Thank you. 
said to the build of cattle sales in spring and autumn, selling fat and cattle. On or later intense birds, his great friend Harry, Harry Pitt would come in from his home and go on, and we'd be all planting uh, types, all types of conifers and spruces in the woodlands. Harry was a salt of the earth type of man, person, and the biggest man I've ever seen. In height and sheer physical strength, and their relationship can only be divided as you need to typify a man of God. It was an idyllic years, idyllic years, but I digress. There are four elements that I would like to mention that may have been of interest in the list of caliber person he was to those here today. At this stage, I'd like to acknowledge I'm using the first two anecdotes of the family of Action Soldier of Britain, also a few batches of the 276 Brigade. And it's transcribed in his notes, the notebooks of John Whitney, the direct descendant. I'd be remiss if I did not also acknowledge the interest of Steve Thornley, whose relative was awarded the DCM at that time, a significant decoration. The interest of Captain Mark Martin was intrigued me and has enlisted the information that for many years I regarded as private, and hence, I suppose, to the victim of the spoils. It would seem that Patrick Sergeant Major Jimmy Flint. On one of his rare visits to the Badger position, had occasion to shout angrily, poorly, repeatedly before a response came very quietly, Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Flynn. Sir was a courteous man and was not to be bullied. Shortly after this event, the Badger was moved to Cambrai, which was, moved, which was regarded as a cushion member and a free and easy atmosphere for the road, to the extent that Sergeant Tommy Jones and Sergeant Sir Worley competed in making crop of army men in Bensburg, as well as other ingredients for the appeal of the other sergeants. You will recall that the army had two rum issues a day in those days, so they must have called it some of the ration. There did not seem to be any complaints in the sergeant's place in the end of it. Immediately after the war, Cyril attended his army mass at Liverpool University and received such a strong and prolonged applause and of what it was reported in the press. He found himself unable to say a word, but the request of the Chancellor explained that he was overwhelmed by the rights that accorded him and touched him so on. In reality, I want to believe that he saw that his actions, in his actions, that he was only doing his duty. He had been given a responsibility and was going to see it through. Shortly after this event, the University of the Rural Council created the Gordy Trust. In 1953, Her Majesty Queen continued the tradition of a garden party for George Cross and BC of Maureen's. On one occasion, Cyril invited his brother Reginald's daughter, Maureen, to accompany him. In itself, it was a rarity to, for him to attend these events, but Maureen was really very pleased and planned to put him in on her time every day, although it took some degree of nervousness about the courtesy of the Parliament. On the day, she arrived at Rosewood to find no sign of anybody, let alone her uncle. As time seemed to be pressing, she became concerned until she heard the farm tractor pull into the barn and Cyril calmly walked through to the farm office, picked up his farm suit coat, stuffed his medals into his pocket, collected more in, and off to the and, and collected more in, and they went off to the palace. On top of these events, there is a line, and the queen walks down and greets the third in the line. Now, Maureen was starting to concern herself over a curtsy, the curtsy, but she noticed that the queen was two, two, two persons away, and all the conversations of those in line had been relatively brief. As the queen approached the individual next to Cyril, he whipped out his medals and put them on just in time to shake hands with the queen. The queen then had an unusually long conversation with Cyril, and after what appeared to be an amusing tete a tete, he then introduced, introduced Maureen, and the courtesy was, was achieved without a sound. I had an occasion to meet Maureen in 2003, and she told me the story, and to her dying day, I know she remembered the day vividly. She died of cancer some years ago. To understand the dynamics and the relationship that my uncle had with his family, he never discussed the war in any general manner. Or at all to us as relatives, or to his siblings in any degree. I know the brothers all met up at Liverpool after my father and brother was demobilized in 1919. I guess to 
and in June of the following year, some boys battling took part in a week-long showing of German positions preceding the Allied attack on Messine Ridge. And it was here that Cyril earned his military medal. Before joining the show, his battery had stockpiled a massive ammunition. When an enemy shell dropped and set fire to the camouflage covering the guns and the ammunition dump. Were it to explode, many lives would be put at risk. But Cyril Gordy, completely disregarding his own safety, promptly extinguished the fire and saved the situation. As I've said, for this act of bravery, he was awarded his military medal. A hundred years ago, his battery moved forward to take part in the first part in the first battle of Congreve. Supporting the infantry, Simmons was one of a thousand guns and 378 tanks that took part in support of the infantry. Initially, the attack went perfectly, with many enemy guns being captured and thousands of prisoners being taken. But on 30th of November, the Germans launched a counter-attack. Cyril Gold called his battery, was in position at Little Creel Farm, and opened fire at the advancing enemies about 7 a.m. But they quickly found themselves on an intense return fire. One of the section officers was severely wounded by shrapnel, and with no other officer available, Sergeant Gawley M.M. was sent to take charge of that section. The enemy pressed forward in an attempt to breach the British lines. And it was now that Cyril earned the Victoria Cross, exactly 100 years ago today. As the enemy came closer and seemed irresistibly, Cyril Gawley manned his gun throughout the day to hold the enemy at bay. At one point he took his gun from its pit and destroyed a machine gun, which was causing carnage. At the end of the day, the enemy had still not managed to achieve their objective, and during that night, the British guns were safely withdrawn. Cyril Gordy was awarded the nation's highest honour, his Victoria Cross. Just over a month later, Cyril was commissioned in the field, continuing to serve the 55th Division. And in May 1919, shortly before he was demarked, was appointed acting captain. Interestingly, when he attended his investiture to receive his VC, he did so wearing his sergeant uniform. Possibly, it's been suggested, as a show of his dissatisfaction that he might have been overlooked for an earlier commission because of defective eyesight. In fact, he did the same when he was given a civic reception shortly afterwards. Was he being defiant? Or did he consider that he earned his VC as a uniformed sergeant, and that was how he showed his respect to his former comrades? Only Cyril could say. But Cyril wasn't yet finished serving his country. And during the Second World War, here in Liverpool, he did his bit by acting as a fire watcher during the Blitz.
was very heavy, though the years have been heavy. After going down in the sun and in the morning, we will remember that. <laughs> Very conspicuous and continuous gallantry and devotion to duty whilst fighting the exception of 4.5 inch howitzers on the 30th of November 1917 in a little creel form on Easter BB. When the enemy advanced in force against the left of the 55th Divisional Front, the officer in command of the section was wounded at once. Sergeant Goldie was sent forward to incapacitate the situation, no officer being available. Found that the enemy was 400 yards in front of the guns, between 300 and 400 yards to one flank, and snipers in the rear. In spite of this, he managed to keep one gun in action and manned it from 10 30 am until dark. All day the gun was a direct target to the enemy from three sides and was continually under fire from artillery, aircraft infantry, machine guns, and snipers. Sergeant Gordon was frequently driven off by artillery and machine gun fire. Always retained and reopened fire, carrying ammunition, laying and firing the gun himself. Taking first one, then another of the, ta the, the detachment to assist him. When the enemy advanced down from the banks in full view, Sergeant Gordon pulled his gun out of the pit and into the open. Switched it round and engaged in a duel with a machine gun. 500 yards, which the enemy had set up in Hall's banks. This machine gun was in rear of our posts, firing into the back of the car infantry and at the gun. He knocked it out with a direct hit and stopped the enemy advancing. All day, he held the enemy. 
on the agenda, firing voting sites of any, on any parties which were in full view at 300 to 800 yards. He engaged any target that appeared in spite of the continuous hostile artillery, machine gun and rifle fire. His tenacity and coolness from the fire and fighting his gun prevented any further enemy advance at this point. This would have entailed the loss of the guns which were successfully withdrawn at nightfall. He was also awarded the Military Medal of Conspicuous Gallantry during the Battle of the Press on the 24th of July today. ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others, and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Let us pray. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your spirit. Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Well, you know the barrack scene where he was in that lane, trying to corner from where I left, we used to go in there. Oh, used to dig the, uh, you know the environment, we used to dig out, get yeah, the lead. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the